All right, guys, last few days to get entered to win our 1987 Buick Grand National. It's triple entry today. Go over to lsnasty.com. Every $1 you spend, we'll get you three entries to win this beautiful 1987 Buick Grand National. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. We are putting the motor and Slick Rick back together. We got Scott in the house. Scott, you breaking a sweat over this yeah, thing? Yeah, it's hot. Yeah? Yeah. Do we hot. need some airflow in here? No. Nah. We can't, we have zero airflow when they're open engines. That's a thing I've noticed. That's, yeah, no dirt. <laughs> you, you actually put your sweat into it. That makes it run better. I'm fat, it's greasy sweat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're putting the heads back on that. We just got the heads back from TK Performance. Shout out to Robbie, uh, everyone up at TCAM Performance. Uh, I put Robbie in a bind for sure, where I was like, hey, let's get these heads refreshed and checked quick. And they did it in an absolutely amazing timeline. Big thank you to Kevin, John Boy, everyone up there. Jared actually came in and put his magic touches on these heads. Hell so I don't yeah. know if you saw the Facebook post, he tagged I did. me. Yeah, I so, did. so we have uh, the heads are uh, assembled by Australians, which means the left is the right and the right is the left. It's going to run faster now. We're we'll, we'll flipping around. Yes, exactly. So real quick, uh, talk to you guys briefly about what we got going on. Uh, this is the ugly head. This one had, from whoever had it previously, had some, some damage. Had a rud, a rapid, unscheduled disassembly in there. But walk them through. We had some new valve seats put in there, some new valve guide bushings put some in wires, there. Yep. Um, just everything, pretty much head to toe, had the heads checked. So the problem we had was initially we took the heads off not due to anything other than it makes a bunch of horsepower and it was raced hard we had a couple of valve tips that had chips on them. i think we showed that in one of the previous videos so you disassemble the head to clean them all up to replace these valves which needed to be done because the heads had about probably 70 passes on them they needed to be looked at um, when robbie disassembled it he found a chip valve seat two of them yeah two of them. not not uncommon in, in what we're trying to do with these things. Um, found some, the actual guides themselves needed new liners put in them, which is nothing but a bronze liner. It's just a sacrificial surface so you can get the valve to guide clearance exactly where you want it. Uh, replaced some guide liners. We put a couple seats in it. They redid the valve job. Two new valves. Two new valves. Redid the valve job. Another shout out to TKM because now all the install heights are the same. They redid the valve job to level out all the valves again. Kudos to those guys. Um, new valve springs, which we just put on, yep. so those are good. All the guys are fresh. Valve job is fresh. These are ready to rock. We're ready to put it and, back. And they cleaned them too. I mean, these look like brand new oh, heads. They were, they were gross. Yeah, they were. I mean, they had been raced and they'd been run and beat on and. But as you can tell, they look brand new. And they took the time, they cleaned the valves as well. You can see this one had a little bit of heat in it where it's kind of impregnated into it. But uh, I mean, they everything looks brand new. Can't um, thank the guys up at TCAM enough for all of their hard work and everything that they do. Uh, and this is just, this is the level of stuff that you need. Um, you know, high quality, make sure everything's done right. At this level, you have no room for error in taking stuff up TCAM Performance. Not just buying new stuff there. Take stuff up there for a refresh. Have them check it over. It's way easier and way cheaper to catch it now. Have them look at it. Imagine mm -hmm. if we never brought if, it up there and had them pop it all apart, right? If we weren't doing routine maintenance on this thing, checking the valve train on it, going, hey, everything looks good, but we got a little chip here. Let's go ahead and run this race, because that's exactly what we did. We're like, hey, it's time to tear it down and look at it. Yep. Tear it down, look at it, you find the little stuff going wrong with it, and you repair it. I don't care who you are, you can't race these things without hurting something on them. It's not catastrophic, it's just you're asking this stuff to do stuff way beyond its capability every time you run it. And, and you know, just like what happens if you don't do the maintenance, it drops a valve, mm. boom, motor's smoked, could mess up. Um, you're putting a sleeve in it, cylinder head repair, uh, new valve, drops a valve seat because the valve seat was getting brittle and cracking, same thing. I mean, so the, the cost of doing a repair to this, which is normal maintenance, is, is nothing. <laughs> Believe it or not, everything on the car turns into a wear item. It is. Even the firewall. That's now a wear item. Yeah, the firewall's now a wear item. <laughs> the firewall's now Nothing wear holding it in anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, big shout to the guys at TK Performance. I know I go up there. I went up there on a Monday and dropped it off, and they were busy working on stuff. And um, 
they got it knocked out. So uh, can't thank the guys at TK Performance enough. Scott's always over here busting his ass. Uh, there's, like I always say, there's a team, there's a group of people to make these cars run. Don't let one person fool you and say that they did it by themselves because that's not the case. There's uh, a bunch of great people behind every single car and program that makes it su successful. So right. Scott's got the, uh, the new head gaskets on there, got them RTV'd on. That's just what, some billet engine stuff? Yeah, so the only reason you put RTV on one of these gaskets Billet block, billet heads, right? There's no water jackets or anything in here. We're not worried about water leakage. This thing's going to seep oil. When it gets cold and you start it and everything has to get in place, it's going to seep oil no matter what you do. Um, so our goal with the, the silicone around the outside edges like that is just to try to keep this thing from leaking oil. It's going to seal up around the center in that outstanding TKM groove in that block. Yep. That fire ring. Yeah, it ain't top fuel nowhere. hoop deal. The com combustion ain't going nowhere unless we screw it up. We didn't. There was no leaking cylinders. There Not was, a single leaking cylinder. Everything looked great. It was just routine maintenance. It was time for rods. It was time for bearings. We found that stuff, and you, real, you never understand how spoiled you are with the LS stuff <laughs> until you start working on this. That's right. So now, now we're really going to turn it up, and we haven't really leaned on it super hard. Uh, we're fixing to, and then this is going to be common for every fifty passes. So, the, I will be aborting runs left and right, so it doesn't count as a pass, just so you know. We're not going to abort very many more runs. we got the car figured out. Yeah, well, I'm saying, like, we go out there for a shakedown, I might just do a little 330 hit. Count that as half a pass. Hey, I want to see you lift. <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> All right, some time has passed. Scott, how is your balloon knot? Pretty good. Is it untied? 100, 110 foot-pound head bolts. That's, uh... You got, you got a good laugh watching me do, do some on this side. Uh, watching your vibrating hand and your arm trying to get to 110 is pretty good. Not gonna lie. That's Anyone really that's never done it doesn't know what Scott's talking about. But if you have done it, you're like, yep, I know exactly what you mean. No joke. Um, heads are going back on. Everything is looking good. Uh, I'm going to put the studs in it and we'll get the headers back on. Jose just called me. The turbos are shipping out. So we should have turbos. Um, really, the, the biggest my biggest concern is going to be getting the oil scavenged. Once we get the oil scavenged and all that stuff situated, if I have to build a reservoir and just drain it after every pass for one side, no, I'm not doing that. I'm, I was like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing that. We'll figure out the oil scavenge. Um, we're not going to put another pump. We're not going to do that. Um, I'll just put a T in it. It'll work. Yeah, we're just going to we're going to move it back, shorten the line, uh, recrimp it, and uh, you got it. and we should be good to go. So um, that's that's what we got. And that's what we're gonna do. And uh, and yeah, so this thing, we're gonna go with some twins. It's definitely gonna be unorthodox. The people in the comment section did not like my idea. Everyone's like, just do it right, like everyone else. <laughs> just do it like everyone else. Ah, if you do it like everybody else, you run with everybody else. Exactly. The goal is to run in front of them. Everyone that's recommending what we need to do with this doesn't have a twin turbo 481X third gen. That's the, that's the issue. If you have a twin turbo 481X third gen, you could put the turbos wherever you want. It's the people at home that really tell you where you need to put them. So that's the problem here. Not me. It's you at home. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, going to get this stuff wrapped up. I've been no help today, Scott. I've been on my computer the entire You've time. You've been doing your job. I've been doing mine. The entire time. So don't forget, uh, it's triple entry right now. Giveaway is coming to the end. This Sunday is the last day you can get entered to win this. Three times entry. Every $1 you spend gets three entries to win this Grand National.